Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Uh, you're watching Discovering the Bible, and I'm going to be your host today, Pastor Nick. And uh, we have a tremendous message uh, here for you today. So if you have your Bibles, uh, gather your Bibles, gather your friends, text uh, your friends, let them know about the message today. It's going to be very enlightening and very powerful. And uh, I just want to welcome all of you that are viewing today, uh, watching us on YouTube or uh, Facebook or live streaming at, uh, at ocn-tv.com. Uh, we welcome you and those watching us on the satellite, welcome today. So um, I just want to start with a, a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, we just ask for your blessing on the word today. I pray that, that all of those who are listening today, that their hearts and minds will be open to the word of God. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would uh, give them the word boldly and strongly and that they would receive it today. And we ask for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, well, today we're going to be talking about seeing Jesus. That's the title of the message today, is to see Jesus. And um, it's not really taught that often these days, but the Holy Spirit uh, prompted me to do a teaching on um, the title today, to see Jesus. And you might say, well, how can we see Jesus today? And so during the course of our study today, I'm going to not only teach from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, but we're also going to get some practical ways uh, in which Jesus can visit you and which you can see him. And we're going to get into that a little bit later in the message today. But first, uh, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 13, selective verses in that passage, but that's going to be our foundational passage for today. And so I'm going to start off by reading, uh, first, before we get to Matthew 17, verse 1, I want to go uh, back to the verse just preceding that, and that's Matthew 16, verse 28, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, uh, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall, taste of, who shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so Jesus used an opportunity to speak to his disciples um, uh, on his journey to ultimately uh, to the cross. But he, he spoke uh, and did some teaching on this with his disciples. And this was a reference to uh, his resurrection, and it's also a reference to his second coming when he sees that they will see him. And the thing I want to emphasize right now is that uh, they see. That's part of the verse. And so it's important not only for the disciples to have seen Jesus, they saw him in person, but uh, there's also spiritual uh, uh, amplifications of, of, of this uh, term as well. And so we're going to see this in our, in our study today. But he wanted them to see something that was spiritual and important uh, because of what Jesus was going to reveal to him, uh, to them in his plan of re redemption. And so keep in mind that the disciples were with him uh, during his three years of ministry, but there were a lot of things that they didn't fully understand. And this was one of them about his resurrection and about his second coming. And uh, the, next, uh, the first verse, I should say, in Matthew 17, verse 1 says, Now after six days, so this is a different occasion. Uh, the first verse I've read to you, he did a teaching that I just described. And then in, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, he gathered uh, them again. And um, after six days, and he took Peter, James, John, and led them to a high mountain by themselves. So Jesus wanted to uh, do a specific teaching to just these three uh, disciples who were on his inner circle, you might say, and whom he wanted to download or to impart some spiritual revelations to them about who he really was. They knew that he was Messiah, but they didn't know uh, all the details that 
that we now know because we have the Word of God, we have the Scriptures, but to them, uh, they kept getting more and more revelation. And so, uh, the Mount, uh, uh, this transfiguration that, we're, that is the subject of our message today, uh, took place on a high mountain in Israel. And in 2015, uh, my wife and I went on a tour of uh, Israel, and we actually did go to uh, what is known as the Mount of Transfiguration. And it was very special because uh, we believe that that was where Jesus uh, took the disciples and where he, where he made some uh, revelatory um, things, uh, told them to them, uh, to the disciples. So moving on, we're going to go to verse 2 of chapter 17, and it said that he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And so that's a key verse in our study today. Uh, the disciples uh, saw him in his glory. They had known him as, as Jesus and as Messiah, but in the natural. But God chose to reveal his son, his only begotten son to them in his full glory. And we're going to see that in our teaching today, which is very, very powerful. And so there's a couple things in this verse we're going to come back to a little bit later in our study today. And so <clears throat> the transformation, many times we hear about a transformation, and um, it, it, take, it can take place uh, emotionally or mentally where we have a transformation, but in this case it was visible. And um, they, they actually saw uh, what was about to happen, and we're going to describe it here in just a minute as far as what the transformation actually happened. Uh, Jesus revealed himself to the disciples in a very unique and special way. And um, this word uh, glory, they saw him, it said uh, it was bright. They described it as bright clothes and light, a lot of light. And so um, we know that he was disclo disclosing his glory to them. And there's a Greek word uh, uh, in the scriptures which is called doxa, D-O-X-A, which describes uh, what um, glory is really all about. <clears throat> and at, at the normal meaning of it was that um, it would be about your reputation and your, your good standing uh, with others, but then it became it became uh, better known as honoring a person, and so that's what we see in this particular text here, is that we saw Jesus in his full glory, uh, in his, and and we honor him and worship him for for who he is, and that's very important. Now in verse three it says, "Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, and was talking with them," and so. Um, you might wonder, well, why did um, Moses and why did Elijah appear with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? And for right now, I'm going to leave that as an open question for you to think about, and we'll come back and talk about that in just a minute, because it is, it is significant. Now, um, the, the two that were in the vision, the open vision, was Moses and Elijah. And we see that in verse 4, that Peter, he said to Jesus, he said, uh, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And if you wish, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And you might say, well, why did Peter want to make a tabernacle? And in order to get understanding of this, we need to go back to the Old Testament when um, uh, Father God gave uh, Moses uh, uh, instructions on how to build a tabernacle, and the whole purpose of the tabernacle was to build uh, a place where God could dwell, the presence of God could dwell, uh, so that they could have fellowship with, with God. Not everybody, but with Moses and the high priest and so forth, but we're not going to do a teaching on that today, but it's, it's sufficient to say that, that uh, 
Peter had in mind, he not only wanted to honor the three, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, but he wanted them to dwell there. And so um, when we think of the presence of God, uh, he does visit his people. He does make appearances here on the earth. But sometimes we call those visitations. But those of us who really love the Lord and want to study his word and to get to know him more, we want a habitation. We want him to be with us, to dwell with us. And scripture says that the Holy Spirit dwells within us, that we are the temple and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. But in this particular teaching right here, uh, the Holy Spirit wasn't given yet. Remember, the Holy Spirit wasn't given until the day of Pentecost, after Jesus' resurrection. But uh, Peter, he wanted to honor uh, Elijah, Moses, and Jesus by building a tabernacle. And so right at the time that um, Jesus was doing this teaching and, and right at this time when there was an open vision, um, a cloud came. And the Bible says that that represented the Father, Jehovah, coming, coming into their midst, into their presence, and he came in the form of a cloud. And it said that uh, the disciples saw the cloud and uh, they heard a voice. And the voice said uh, that this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is verse 5. And so we see that, that Father God uh, made a confession or an affirmation of Jesus and his ministry and, his, and the, the mission that he was on to accomplish redemption. And so we don't see very many uh, utterances by the Father in the New Testament directly, at, at, but we do see it in the um, Gospels, and we do see it here in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17. And so we go on for the, uh, to the next verse, verse 7, and it says that Jesus came and touched them and said, do not be afraid, because they were just in total awe. They saw the cloud, they saw, uh, the, they heard the voice of, of the Father, and um, they really, the only way they could respond was in awe and in worship of what was taking place. And so uh, verse 8 says that when they, uh, after they heard the voice and after they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus only. And so uh, Moses and Elijah uh, did, did not appear anymore on that mount, but just Jesus. And the Father was saying that this is the one that I'm pleased this is the, the, my son who's going to uh, eventually go to the cross, eventually be resurrected from the dead, uh, eventually ascend to heaven, and eventually be seated at my right hand. And so we see that, that Jesus was, was manifested in all of his glory, and he was identified by the Father as the, the sent one, the anointed one, the Messiah. And uh, to answer the question that we, we had a little bit earlier about why did God choose to have Moses and Elijah there? Well, Moses represented the law because remember the, the law was given to Moses for the people, for the nation of Israel. And remember that Elijah represented the prophets, the prophetic ministry. And so the reason that they were uh, gathered there with Jesus was to uh, emphasize the ministry that Jesus was, was going to have and did have. He was going to have a prophetic ministry. Uh, he was going to fulfill the scriptures about the Messiah in the Old Testament and uh, fulfill those promises. And so uh, Jesus, of course, he knew uh, about the Torah. He knew about the prophets. He knew about the prophecies of him that were to be fulfilled and that were being fulfilled uh, during his ministry. So that's very important to, to understand. Now, uh, why would the Holy Spirit, uh, or what does he want us to learn from this passage of the, of the transfiguration, that is the full revelation 
of our Lord and Savior. So we, we need to go back up to verse 2 and see that, uh, I'm going to read it again, uh, and he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. So those, the two key words is transfigured. Uh, they, they saw him in a new way, in a new light. Uh, more revelation was given to them visually as they saw Jesus transform from just um, a human physical uh, standpoint to a revelation of who he really was in the spirit so they could see both uh, the natural and the spiritual. And, and then it also mentions light. And so the way, that this, uh, the, the way that Matthew described this event and this situation was that it was so bright. Uh, not only the clothing was bright, but there was just light all around Jesus, his glory, his Shekinah glory. And so uh, it's specifically mentioned it was, it was like light. And so uh, in a minute, we're going to be talking about the contrast between uh, his appearance and some, some spiritual applications of this particular verse and revelation. And so it's very important to, to state that these disciples <clears throat> saw Jesus in all of his glory. And Jesus wants to reveal his glory to you today. And um, he still appears to people today, not just in the first century church, but all uh, from that point on, from the first century up until the present day, Jesus does make appearances to, to people. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in, our, in our message today. And so um, rev how does Jesus reveal himself to us? And there's at least three ways, there's more than three ways, but I'm just going to touch on three different ways that he reveals ourself, himself today to us. First of all, he can do it by visual appearances, like he did with the disciples. And remember, he appeared to Paul uh, physically. Uh, Paul uh, saw a vision of Jesus when he was on the road to Damascus and was um, converted and went from Judaism to a revelation of, of Messiah and who Christ was. And he still appears to people today. And uh, he's appearing to more people today. He's appearing to Muslims uh, in, the, in the Middle East. Uh, many times he'll, he'll appear to um, leaders in the, the body of Christ, in the, the kingdom of God, uh, depending on their assignment and depending on their ministry. And so... He still appears to people today, and I believe by faith that he's going to appear and reveal himself to you as you hear this message, as you read the scriptures. Um, so the first way is that Jesus can reveal himself visually to people. The second way is he can reveal himself to those of us in prayer. Uh, when you pray to God and when you pray the scriptures, the Holy Spirit can speak to you in ways and reveal Christ to you in a particular situation. Maybe it's something that, that you need to uh, a change in the natural. Uh, maybe uh, you need to be revived and restored. Uh, maybe you need a job. Maybe you need your marriage healed. Whatever the situation is, God can reveal himself to you uh, in a time of prayer. But the one that I'm going to camp on today is that he reveals himself in Scripture. And um, as a matter of fact, Jesus is referred to in the entire Bible, in all 66 books. There's uh, references to Messiah. There's references to, to Jesus. And especially in the New Testament, as you know, in the Gospels and in the Epistles, uh, the person of Jesus is revealed. But I want to emphasize that it's up to us to learn about Jesus. That if we're hungry enough, and if we pursue him enough, he promises to reveal himself to us. And I'm going to share two verses with you uh, 
that speak to uh, God wanting to have a relationship with you. First, we're going to go to the epistle of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. And verse 17 says that Paul was praying that the people in Ephesus would, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, referring to the, the person of Jesus. And so God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you understanding of who the person of Jesus is, to, to reveal Jesus to you in his glorified state. Remember, he's no longer in the grave. He's resurrected. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is real. He does speak to us. Uh, many times he, he will appear to, to people as well. So that's very important to know that God wants you to have wisdom and revelation about the person of Jesus. Verse 18 says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. So what this is referring to is uh, understanding, not just visually, but spiritually, to be able to, to understand uh, not only things about God and things about God's ways, but to understand what your assignment is, what your purpose is here on this earth. It says here that you may know what is the hope of his calling. So all of us have a calling, all of us have a destiny, all of us have a purpose, and it's God's desire and his will for you, for you to discover uh, what your assignment is. And then uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about today is um, in Habakkuk, which is an Old Testament prophet, in verse 2, verse 14, it says, For the earth, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And so that's referring to his second coming, that not just the believers are going to know about Jesus, but that everyone's going to know about Jesus, because he will be revealed in his full glory and his full um, character and his full authority and power and name. And, and so today, as we conclude our, our message today, I want to give uh, those of you an opportunity who maybe have never considered a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment uh, because it's important for you to have a relationship with Jesus. That's, God, that's God's plan. He wants to have a relationship with you and me and, and every, every one of his, every one of his uh, creations. And uh, also there may be some of you who are watching today who maybe once uh, knew, the G knew Jesus, the Savior, but you've wandered far away from him. And I want to give you an opportunity to uh, re re rededicate your life and to repent uh, before the Lord so that you can come back into fellowship with him. So right now, uh, I'd like those of you who are watching to look into the screen and to say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, um, I want to invite you into my life, into my heart. Um, I am a sinner. I have blown it. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and uh, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died, you were buried, you, and you were raised from the dead, and you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Um, I want you to come into my life and show me your ways. Uh, open doors that I can't open, but only you can open, and shut doors that need to be shut in my life, changes that need to, to happen in my life, and I promise to follow you all the days of my life. Now, if you said that prayer, I want you to know that you are born again and that you have a relationship uh, with the living God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to hear from you. Uh, there's going to be a reference on the screen of how you can contact us. You can either uh, call us on the phone, uh, which is uh, uh, area code 323-638-2710. There it is on the screen. Or you can write to us at OCN Broadcasting, P.O. Box 45465, Los Angeles, California. Nine, there it is on the screen, 90045. And we encourage you to contact us because we want to know of your decision for Christ. We want to pray for you. We want to help you on your, uh, your, your walk with the Lord, your journey with the Lord. It's a fabulous journey. 
Uh, it's completely transformed my life, and I know the Lord's going to do the same thing for you. So in the few minutes that we have left, I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray that uh, all of the words that were spoken today, the scripture verses that were spoken uh, today, would go deep into their spirits, deep into their hearts, and would change their lives and transform them for the better. And uh, I pray that they would come to know you in a very personal way. I pray that you'd give them the wisdom and the understanding about who you are and how great you are. And Lord, we worship you. We lift up your name. And uh, we're so glad that, uh, that you're not only a part of our life, but you're part of OCN Broadcasting here. And uh, we, uh, we ask you to, to pray for this ministry as well as we pray for you. So until the next time we get together on Discovering the Bible, I pray that God would pour out his blessing to you and that uh, he would help you and give you direction for your life. And we pray for all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.